1 Timothy chapter 3. We're going to look at one verse. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. The title of the message is, Who is Jesus to you? Who is Jesus to you? 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Who is Jesus to you? The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Brother Jay, can you please pray for the message? Father God, we thank you, first of all, for coming down from heaven to earth and living a perfect, sinless life for 33 and a half years, and dying on the cross, shedding a precious blood to wash all our sins away, and was buried and rose again. After three days, proving yourself that you are God. Amen. People today commemorate or think about your coming, Lord God, and wondering who you are. But we know that you are the risen Savior to save the world, Lord God, save sinners. We ask you, Lord, that you would open the eyes of the folks, Lord God, in the world today. And for many lost souls, pray that today will be the day of salvation. Amen. And for those who are here, Lord God, and those who are listening, pray that you come with their hearts, Lord God, of sin, righteous judgment. Yes. And pray that they'll know you as their Savior, Amen. Lord. And pray that you'll use Pastor Jay mightily, Amen. filled with your Holy Spirit, yes. given the liberty and the authority and the power from on high to declare your word Amen. unto the hearers. And we ask that you fill each and every one of us with your Holy Spirit. Help us not to think of the things that are happening in our lives, but wholly give ourselves unto your word. Protect us from devil's attack, and pray that all the things said and done will be done for your honor and for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Who is Jesus to you? That, based upon your answer, it will determine whether you'll be going to heaven or you'll be burning in hell for eternity. Yes. A lot of people know Jesus, heard of Jesus, but they don't really know who Jesus really is. We are doing street preaching yesterday, and at the end, you know, Brother Peter witnessed to one lady, sister named Ramona, and then she went and told him that I'm going to go bring somebody so that they could talk to you. And they, you know, go, okay, you could talk to Pastor Jay. And, you know, it's a small world. You know, the person that they brought was a elder sister who used to come to our church like, over 10 plus years ago. Wow. And that was actually her son. Wow. And they wanted me to talk to him because he was not saved. He thought he was okay. And fundamental difference we had was that his final authority was not the Bible. So if this good old King James Bible, yeah. 1611, wow. is not your final authority, we can't have any conversation. Amen. Probably he heard some stuff that <clears throat> no one ever told him before. He said he believed in Bahala. I don't know if anybody heard of religion called Bahala. I know. You. Yeah, it's new. Yeah. I tried to look for it. All I saw was a Viking, right. you know. I don't think it's a Viking <laughs> fairy tale from the past, you know. <laughs> Apparently, what they believe in is the message of messengers. So he just saw Jesus Christ as just a messenger. He didn't believe Jesus is God. Mm. And one thing that threw him off was that in Genesis 1.26, Bible says in our image. That proves Trinity. Yes. Amen. And so how do you explain our? Right. He goes, That's, that depends on your interpretation. <laughs> I said, okay, 
I means one, my means one, our means plural. Amen. Yes. That just tells you how sad of a state people are in. Yes. Even though you show them right out of the word of God, read it to them, yes. they refuse to believe it. Yes. I mean, the devil has blinded the minds of the world, That's just right. like in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. So whatever they've heard, and if they hear the truth from the word of God, they can't accept it anymore. You know what that tells me? Their hearts are very hardened. Yes. If you tell them Jesus is God, Lord and Savior, you show them right from the Bible. I'm pretty sure everyone has done that. You have your family members, you have your loved ones, you have acquaintances, you have your fam- I mean, you have your friends, and then you show them from right from the Word of God, so-called Bible-believing, quote-unquote, Christians, right. and you check their salvation, and then they get angry. Yes. First thing, how dare you tell me, how dare you ask me if I'm saved or not? Yeah. Don't you know I've been going to church for 15 years, 20 years, 30 years? It doesn't matter if you went to church all your life. Amen. It is a simple answer. Yes. Don't you get frustrated if you ask that question to someone? Are you saved? And then they put a long list of reasons. Yeah. Except just trusting Christ and Him alone as their Savior. So best question that I heard from Dr. Ruckman when you're asking anybody about their salvation, it's not the question, do you believe in Jesus? Everybody believes in Jesus. Right. Devils believe and they tremble, right? right? But the question that you and I should always ask if you're about to witness or talk to someone about their salvation, what are you trusting to go to heaven? Amen. That's the best question. What are you literally trusting to go to heaven? When I asked that question to a gentleman yesterday, he said, I trust, you know, God's messenger. I trust, you know, the revelation that God does through their messenger. And I said, you know, you, you sound like so many of the followers in many of the cults, yes, right? Because cult leaders, they call themselves Messiah. Right. I said, you know what then? I could be your God. You know, I've explained to you about the Bible more than anybody ever done in that 30 minutes. Then you should call me God because I'm your Messiah. I'll tell you how to go to heaven my way. At that point, he goes, no, no, I don't want to do that, right? <laughs> then what are you believing in? Yeah. If you don't have Bible as the final authority, everybody will get in trouble. Yes. If you don't have Bible as final authority, Jesus could be anybody. He could be just a prophet right. that many religions say he is, right. like Muslims or yeah. anybody else, like good person according to Confucius and Buddhism. He's one of the several gods that God created according to Jehovah's Witness. Oh, no. I mean, Mormon doctrine, I don't know if it's still the same. They say he's the brother of Satan, right. right? So people get really messed up when it comes to doctrine of Jesus Christ. Yes. But long story short, Jesus is God. Amen. He is Lord. Yes. He is Savior. Thank you, Lord. And he's in my heart as my Amen. Lord and Savior. I only trust him to go to heaven. Amen. And his blood washed away all my sins. Woo! That's who he is. If that's Jesus to you, brethren, you have nothing to worry about whether you're going to heaven or hell. If you put your trust in him alone to take you to heaven, even if you wanted to go to hell now, you can't. And it's always funny during, you know, street ministry, people get really angry. We hold these signs, you know, with the pictures, the thing about hell. And then, you know, you're going to hell. And then we have Bible verses, how to not to go to hell on the bottom. And then they get really offended. Yeah. They have nothing else to say except they cuss or whatnot. And then they tell me, hey, you're going to hell. You know? How dare you tell other people they're going to hell? You know? I always tell them I can, even if I wanted to. <laughs> you know, I trust that Christ is my Lord and Savior. Even if I want to jump into hell, I can. You know, even yeah. if I want to... You know, how should I say, you know, back in the days of Inquisition, when people were getting killed, even nowadays in, you know, many of the, you know, third world countries, communist countries, even if you recant, even if you say, you profess that, you know, I don't believe in Jesus Christ anymore, please stop torturing me, right? Yeah. 
I will still go to heaven. Amen. I'm a coward Christian, sure. but you know what? I can never lose my salvation. Once saved, always Why? Saved. Because of who Jesus Christ is. Amen. Because he is God. So yes. during this time, you know, there are a lot of questions come up to Christians, right? Oh, you know, what about having trees at home? You know, what about, you know, celebrating and all that stuff? You know, it's up to your conscience, brethren. It's not up to you to judge other brethren. How dare you have this? How dare you, you know, you know, sing all these Christmas hymns during only the Christmas time? I mean, if you don't sing any other time of the year to mem remember Christ, if you do it this time, good for you, right? Yeah. You know, and if you use this opportunity, this time of the year to witness to others, oh, good yeah. for you, yes. right? And it's none of our business to tell another brethren you shouldn't do or do that, right? right. It's up to the conscience. You know, if you have any questions about it, you could just go to Romans chapter 14. It talks about it. And even in the book of Galatians, it talks about, you know, people, you know, have questions about the, observing the times and the seasons. It's up to you. As long as you don't believe that Jesus was born on December 25th, you're on the right course, right? Amen. You know, we all know he wasn't. Just a long story short, right? You know, he was most likely born sometime in September. Yes. Yeah. And, and then based on the, all the biblical, you know, doctrines, you know, going through the three Passovers yeah. and all that will put you in the right spot around September. And obviously the shepherds were there sleeping outside. They can't do that during December. It's too cold. Right. Right? They'll freeze to death. Right? Yes. So the just simple common sense things will let you know it's not because obviously December 25th is all about worshiping sun god through Tammuz, you know, through yes. Semiramis, through Nimrod. Yes. I mean, you know how you see all this paganism out there? You have this son, and then you have guy and the woman and the child, yes. right? You know, that's, that goes all the way back to Nimrod and Semiramis. Just, you're just worshiping pagan god, Amen. right? But funny thing is that I didn't know before I started studying the Word of God if someone showed me. And that's the job of Christians. Your commission is to tell people about Jesus Christ. That's your task. That's your duty. We're to, we are supposed to be witness for Jesus Christ to the other parts of the earth, yeah. according to Acts chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. Yes, then during this time, you know, instead of trying to look at other brethren and how they behave during Christmas time, you have to think about the lost souls out there. You have to find every opportunity to witness to them. What better time than right now to tell them about Jesus Christ, right? It's a lot easier doing it right now than, say, February. February is President's Day, right? What are you going to talk about? You know, George Washington, you know? No, like right now, you could talk about Jesus Christ. Amen. Because they are celebrating, you know, birth of Jesus Christ, sure. even though they don't really know what's going on. Right. Then as Christians, you have to ask yourself, what have I done? I mean, it's a command from the Lord. You're supposed to be a witness for him. Jehovah's Witness shouldn't be the only people out there holding their literature yeah. and then trying to set up booths at all these malls and trying to have someone come and talk to them. Mm -hmm. No. You and I, our job is to go out there and preach the gospel yeah. to every creature out there. And... If you can't do that, then you're a coward, Amen. Christian. You won't burn in hell. You'll go to heaven. Thank God for that one yes. save, always save. But you're going to lose your rewards, right? You can't throw your crowns at the Lord. Right. Think about it. Don't you want to throw a lot of crowns to the Lord and Savior yes. who saved you from eternal lake of fire? Man, I, I want to throw as much as I can. I mean, think about it, you know, if you lead people to the Lord, if you just witness, plant the seed, like pass out tracts, right? Even a single Bible verse that you tell them, right? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. Or even, you know, those famous verses, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God, you know? And then, you, and then they think, and then maybe they come to the knowledge of tr truth and they repent and they get saved. Amen. Then they're, they're going to be part of your crown, yes. you know, a crown of rejoicing. Don't you want to throw a lot of those on the Lord's feet? Yes. Because all we're going to do in heaven is just praise Him. 
praise him forever and ever and ever. Amen. And I can't sing. I can never hit the high note, you know. But over there, I know I could, you know. Yeah. You know. We have like some sisters, brothers who could sing really well. You know, over there, I won't be jealous anymore. Yeah. Right? And I could just do that forever, just serving, you know, and then praising my Lord and Savior. But Christians forget that. Christians are all about their own troubles. They're only thinking about these worldly issues. If your life is only all about finance, if your life is only about relationship, if your life is only about you know, having a good time, then you have a really wrong purpose in your life. Preach. What was the purpose of Jesus Christ? Preach. Why are we here on earth still now? Then let's look into some of the things that Jesus Christ, the purpose of why he was here, why he came down. Let's go to the book of Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. You and I have to remember, why did Lord come anyways? He's the creator of the universe. He could do whatever he wants. Yes. With his words, he could just destroy the world. Amen. He could create the world. And I mean, why did he have to come die and suffer for us? Luke chapter 19, verse 10, the Bible says, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. His purpose was to save sinners. That's it. Shouldn't our purpose be out there, lead people to the Lord? Amen. Let God use you as tools to save sinners out yes, there. Please. And then let's go to Matthew 9, verse 13. Matthew 9, verse 13. Because someone might ask you, why did Jesus come? What are you going to say? Oh, because he loved the world. Because he's all about love, right? They're missing the point. He came to save sinners. Amen. Matthew 9, verse 13. The Bible says, But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Yeah. Ah. How many people have you led to the Lord where they came to the knowledge of truth, they repented and accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. If you have zero experience in your life when it comes to that one, you lived a very wasteful life. Yes. Right? right. I mean, what you've done for the Lord is going to last forever. Amen. What you've done for yourself will just burn up. Amen. Right? I mean, God said he promised that he'll provide all your needs. If your needs are met, you should be happy, yes. right? But he still have grace and mercy to provide you some luxuries in your life. But if you strive to live your life to gain status in the world, gain possessions in the world, you're going to have a very, very bad ending as a Christian. That's why many Christians don't have peace during this time of the year. Why? Because they're so worried about what am I going to do, you know, how many presents am I going to buy? You know, how am I going to fulfill this? How am I going to fulfill that? You know, is that the real question that you should have? I mean, as a Christian, you have to work diligently. You have to support your family, especially if you're head of household. You know, you can't be lazy, any of that. Yes. But if you're doing your best, you have purpose that you have to live by. You have to try to win souls to the Lord. Amen. These lost souls out there. Yes. Let's look at one more. First Timothy chapter one. First Timothy chapter one, verse fifteen. I mean, these three verses. If you just know it by heart, now you know. What is the purpose? Why did Jesus Christ come to this earth and die for everybody? 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15, Bible says, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. So that's it. Why did Jesus Christ come? To save sinners in this world. Yes. And it's not about, you know, we're not going to get into it too much. It's not about predestination. It's not about selected people. Yeah. All. Every creature out there, right? Yes. Whether you are yellow, green, white, black, brown, he yes. died for every single person. Amen. He died for the rich. He died for the poor. Yes. He died for every, every creature in this world. Thank you, Jesus. Then you know his purpose. 
But when it comes to his deity, that's where, you know, a lot of, lot of confusion comes. Yeah. Jesus Christ came in the form of man. He's 100% human human. And he's 100% God. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ did not thought it robbery to be equal with God. Yeah. Right. Amen. What does that tell you? If you say you believe in the Bible, then if you don't believe that Jesus is God, then you don't believe in the Bible. Sure. Simple as that. Yeah. I was telling the gentleman yesterday, what is your name? You know, he says his name is Stephen. Okay. Then you're Stephen. I always keep on calling him Chris the whole time. So, like, so you're not Chris, right? <laughs> I'm not Chris. You're Stephen, right? If Bible says Jesus is God, there's no other ways around it. That's it. You know, it's like people always try to make things hard, complicated for themselves. One plus one is two, right? It's two for me. But you could always like try to reason it, you know, abnormally and say, you know, that's a window, that's like something else. But to any kid, you ask any of our young kids here, one plus one, they're gonna say two. You gotta have, you gotta be simple when it comes to faith. Just like little children, just believe what he says. Yes. What do you have to go any deeper than what he says? And you know what that got to me really. And I felt so bad for his soul. He said, how can you believe Bible literal? He couldn't believe the story of Jonah. He couldn't believe Lazarus and rich man. He couldn't believe in hell. Mm -hmm. I'm like, who am I talking to here? You don't, don't ever call yourself uh, someone who believes in the Bible. You're deceiving everybody. Yes. You don't believe any major important doctrine. If you don't believe even one teachings or doctrines in the word of God, you don't believe the whole thing. It's like I'm only trusting Jesus Christ 99% to go to heaven. Oh, no. 1% I'm trusting something else. Dangerous. That's why you have to be careful, especially our older adults who found the truth and young children who grew up in the church. Yeah. You have to check your salvation. Amen. I never tell anybody that you're not saved unless they give real testimony like yesterday, right? right? Who's never trusted Christ alone to go to heaven. But there are many people who's confused. They come to find out that Jesus is God. They believe it now because the Bible says so. However, they used to have some experience before they found Jesus Christ. You know what? One day I was dreaming and I saw Jesus. He came and he spoke to me. You are chosen. You are one of those selected. Right. I am going to save you. And next morning you wake up and you feel so good. Wow. You had such a good dream. You know, so called Jesus showed up my dream. Yeah. And then you start telling people, you're so excited. Hey, guess what happened? God spoke to me. Uh, oh, through the word of God? No, no, no. <laughs> I was sleeping, you know, and then he spoke to me. He was the angel of light. But, you know, it said, be not deceived, right? Satan's going to come out as angel of light. Yes, sir. Deceive people. After the Bible's completed, no reason for you to rely on any dreams or visions. Amen. So if you have bad dreams, forget it. Yes. It's there, it doesn't mean anything, right? If you have good dreams, forget it. It doesn't mean anything. Because some people, even as Christians, you have such a great dream, right? You wake up, you expect to have a great day, but you have one of the worst days. No, don't rely on those things, right? Yes. I, mean, I don't know how brain exactly works, right? But you know, sometimes you think on things a lot. You know, it would just show up. Yes. You know? Some people dream a lot and some people don't. Right. Yeah. You know, if I'm I'm deep sleeper usually, and I don't dream a lot. So does that mean that God doesn't talk to me? No, I have the word of God. Amen. Right? So if you are really if you ever trusted on your visions or dreams 
as source of you know, your salvation, you have to rethink. Yes. You have to check yes. what happened to me afterward. Right. And then second major one is you know, all this charismatic movement, Pentecostal Assembly of God, right. where you have Holy Spirit experience. Very dangerous, yes. right? So, oh, I spoke in tongues. You know, tongues are a different language, Amen. right? So unless you spoke in another language, you know, that's not a tongue, right? Right. It's gibberish, right? <laughs> if, you know, we have our brethren from different countries here, you know, say I'm trying to show that, you know, back in the day, book of Acts chapter 2, during that time, you know, these disciples spoke in tongues to show as a sign to unbelieving Jewish people. Right. Tongues are for a sign, and signs are for whom? Jews. Jews. I'm not a Jew. Actually, I am. <laughs> Physically, my last name is Jew. Bless the Jew. So I could always, you know, <laughs> play off of that, right? Yes. But there's another Jew sitting there. I, we have like a couple Woo! Jews here, right? Bless you know? <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, right? When you do not rightly divide the word of God, that's what happens, yeah. right? Suddenly you think that, okay, I received sign from God. I spoke in tongues. I had Holy Spirit experience. I felt like, you know, Holy Spirit came into me. You know, people don't even know how to receive Holy Spirit. You ask a lot of people, so how do you receive Holy Ghost? They say, oh, you know, by fire. I mean, they want to burn in hell, right? You know? No, no, no. You know, you receive Holy Ghost when you trust Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Right? Amen. Now, according to the book of Galatians and also 1 Corinthians 12 and 12. So it comes by faith, right? But some people try to get it by experience. So say you grew up in that environment and the Lord is giving you grace and mercy and you found the truth. At that time, you better make sure that you reject every false doctrines and teaching that you ever learn. Yes, sir. Yes. Because I met so many people and our brethren have met so many people. When you ask, do you know for sure you go to heaven after you die? The response is, yes. I trusted Christ as my Lord and Savior. But follow up question. What are you trusting only to go to heaven? Then they go, oh, yeah, you know, I had Holy Spirit experience. I spoke in tongues, you know. I saw vision. I, I, I. And then I also accepted Christ. You're not saved then. Right. Amen. You're trusting something other than Jesus Christ to go to heaven. Right. This is where works come in, feelings come in. Feelings, works, plus Jesus Christ. That's why it's very dangerous. Yes. That's why we check and triple check our children as they grow up in the church. Sometimes they accept Christ because they're scared of their parents. Right. Sometimes they accept Christ because it's getting too long. Right. They want to go out there and play with their friends. Yes. So let's get it over with, right? <laughs> but you know for sure if they did it from their heart or not, if you ask those questions. So anybody here and who's listening, if you don't remember a time, that's why we always ask. Not because, you know, it is very important that, you know, you remember exactly what time, what date you got saved. But you should remember that time. Yes. That time when you knew you were a sinner on your way to hell. Yeah. You believe that Jesus is God who died for your sins. His blood can wash away your sins. And then with repenting hard, you know, turning away from your ways and turning to God and accepting Christ. If you don't remember that time, I would question it. Yes. Because that is the greatest event that happened in your life. Amen. Where you became a new creature. Where old things passed away. All things have become new. Amen. Where you were on your way to hell. Yes. You oh. turn and you got saved and you're going to heaven. Woo! We have married people here or who went through weddings in the past. Do you not remember your wedding day? Mm. Everybody remembers that wedding day. If you had your child for the first time, mothers, do you 
not remember when you had your child for the first time? So important events in your life, you might not know the exact dates, sure. but you know when it happened. Yes. yes. If you do not know when you trusted Christ and you do not remember the day when you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, knowing all this and where you realize that now I'm going to heaven once and for all, you have to check. Amen. It's better to double, triple check than thinking that you're saved and you're at the wrong judgment. Mm. Instead of at the judgment seat of Christ, you're at the white throne judgment. Oh, no. Then it's too late. Yes then you're going to be sent straight down to hell. Yes. And, you know, every preacher will say, you're going to have a lot of surprises in heaven. People you thought you wouldn't be there. They wouldn't, yeah, right? Yeah. People you thought they wouldn't be there. And people you thought they shouldn't be there. I mean, people you thought they would be there, but they're not. Don't let that person be you. There's no shame getting it right once and for all. No. Yeah. I mean, why would I take chance? Yeah. You know, I mean, if there is a possibility that you're going to burn in hell for all eternity, not just 10,000 years, not just 1 million years, but for all eternity, yeah. but you're not 100% sure Get safe. you're going to heaven, you think you're, I think I'm about 99% sure. I mean, what does that even mean? That means that you're not sure 100% then there is a possibility that you could burn in hell. Yes. Don't be naive or deceived like the gentleman I talked to yesterday, where they're like, you know, other religions don't believe in literal hell. Oh, no. Because they don't believe in the word of God. Yes. Yeah. They're like, where's hell? Yeah, underneath. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're sitting on top of it, you know, yeah. right? And, I mean, literally, I was, you know, Oh, you know, by grace of God, I was able to answer every one of his questions, Amen. right? And then, you know, hopefully at the end of the day, you know, he come to knowledge of truth and get saved. Yes. That's, that's number one. But the thing is, there are billions of people thinking the same in the Catholic religion, Absolutely. Islam religion, yes. Buddhism, you know, every other indigenous religions out there, yes. and including Bahala, you yes. know. I heard for the first time yesterday, like all of these people, they're, they're like a mixed pot. Yes. They know truth somewhere, so they believe it, but they don't believe it wholeheartedly. And what happens? Who is Jesus to them? Just someone you see in a manger during holiday season. They don't believe it 100%. Then where are they going to end up? They're going to end up in hell. Yes. And I'll go this quickly. You know, first of all, you know, Jesus Christ is eternal. Amen. Right? He's eternal. Yes. I mean, if he's not eternal, then he's not God. You know, Exodus 3, 14 said, And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. Right? John 8, 58, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. I mean, this I am is God. Yes. And that's Jesus Christ. And I think one of the most exciting things that whenever I hear and prepare is, what are his names, right? I mean, he's wonderful counselor, mighty God, father, prince of peace, Lord, shepherd, savior, light, rock, first and last, holy one, alpha and omega, king of kings and lord of lords. Amen. Amen. Those are names for God. He's not a small God, right? He's not brother of Satan. No. Right? It's not just a messenger out there. No. We're, we're talking about Almighty God. Yeah. I mean, John 10.30 says, I am my Father I want. Amen. You know. But someone will always bring out this stuff to you. Oh, you know. Jesus Christ said, you know, he that sent me is greater than I. Always brings it up. Always. Yeah. You know, John 14.28. Always. You know how to answer that? As a human, yeah. I'm tired. I'm thirsty. I'm going through every human emotions that possible. Yes. Compare me to God? Oh yeah. Yeah, he's greater than me. Yes. 
but I'm also God. Even though I've been tempted and everything, I've never sinned. 100% human and 100% God. If anyone to ever ask you that, that's all you reply, right? He could say that because he was 100% God, but in Philippians 4, 6, he says, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He said, I'm same as God. Amen. And then don't get into Holy Spirit in Trinity. He blew his mind off, right? <laughs> Not just Jesus being God. Holy Spirit is God also. I couldn't understand. But what does the Bible say? And without contradict, great, it's a mystery of godliness. It's a mystery. How are you trying to understand Trinity of God with your puny human brain? Yeah. I was just pull my hair out and trying to try to scientifically explain it, right? <laughs> but Bible is the most scientific book. Amen. Prophecies came to be true, yes. right? Yes. I mean, 40 things about a person before he was born. Yeah. That's like, I'm pretty sure our you know, brethren remember in the Bible, say like 1 to the 10 to the 157 zeros right. of happening. Right. I mean, it's going to take me like a few minutes to write 157 zeros. That's a possibility. And no one has ever proven it. No one ever seen the bones of Jesus Christ. Amen. He's resurrected. Yes. Who could resurrect himself but God? Right? So evidence is overwhelming. And we have the evidence to tell others this overwhelming evidence that there's evidence that if you don't get saved, you're going to burn in hell. But there's also evidence that if you trust Christ and him alone, you go to heaven once and for all. Amen. And of course, God, Jesus Christ is omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent. He was, he's the creator of the universe. Yes. He has power over all the elements of nature. Right. I mean, who could just tell the wind to stop? You know, who could just tell anything that's happening in the nature? You do as what I say. Man, when it's hot, I can tell the sun to, hey, stop being hot. <laughs> I just have to run away from the sun, yeah. find the shade. But he can do it because he's God. Amen. And Christ forgave sins. Yes. That's why Pharisees hated him. Yeah. Because who could forgive sins except God? Right? right? Mm-hmm. And he is God. And then he also yeah. accepted worship. You know, I mean, God accepts worship. Yes. You know, real God, true God, right? Unlike yes. the fake ones out there. Now, then who is Jesus to you? Is he just mere someone that you hear in many, many stories nowadays? Or is he someone who is God and who can save you from eternal lake of fire Amen. once and for all? Who has the keys of hell? and death, and heaven, Amen. right? He's the only one, Yes. right? That, if I were you, if you haven't trusted him as your Lord and Savior, you know, I'll cling unto him. Oh, yeah. Amen. I want him to open the door Let's yes. go. from hell to heaven. Yes. And he's the only one who could do it. So this time of the year, we know the right doctrines and all not, but it is a great opportunity for us to reach out to the lost souls out there. Yes. And if you don't do it, you're disobeying God's commission from Acts 1, 8 and 9. Don't you want to be fain, found faithful, yes. right? Yes. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Instead of, man, you wicked servant, you didn't do anything. So I'm going to even take away what you have and give it to someone. God is fair God. Yes. You have to check your heart. At the end of the day, every comes down to your heart. Do you really love the Lord Jesus Christ who saved you from hell? Do you appreciate what he has done for you? Are you really thankful? And do you truly love these lost souls out there? Don't look at their physical appearance. Amen. It's going to deceive you. You got to look at what's real. Yes. You got to look at their soul. Amen. You got to look beyond who they are. Because if that soul does not trust Christ as their Lord and Savior, that soul's going to burn in hell forever. Yes. And ever, and ever, and ever. Man, that is 
to your worst enemies, you don't want that to happen, right? No. Hell's made for devil and his angels. Think about the torment and the suffering that a human being, very, very, you know, weak human beings, kind of, I mean, they're going to feel the torture for the rest of their eternity. Yes. You and I have jobs to do. Amen. If you say, I don't know what to do as Christians, <laughs> here's something that you can do. You got to go preach the word. Whether you are a four-year-old, five-year-old, you could always pass our tracks. Yes. If you could talk, God could use it. Yes. You got to use it for his glory. You got to use it for those lost souls out there. And best part of it all is that you don't have to do it on your own. Amen. I can't do it on my own. No. I have to rely on the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. to do it. And you get scared when you're talking to people? Good. Rely on the Lord. Rely on the Holy Ghost to speak through you. Yes. Then you'll have fruits. You try to do it on your own, everything, you're going to mess it up. Oh, yeah. Your pride's going to get in the way. Instead of you loving that soul, you're condemning that soul more. Like, you don't know this? <laughs> no? like, you don't know about this doctrine? I mean, maybe you don't even deserve to get saved. You, oh. you kind of have, you got to, those type of pride kind of get into your heart. Yes. You don't want that to happen. Always remember that you're less than nothing. Always remember that you're weaker than everything. Yes. You just try, and, you trust and rely on the Lord and then let him use you. Once you take that first step, rest of the steps get easier and easier and easier. Once you open your mouth for the Lord, rest of them gets easier and easier. Once you start passing out, not even just leave it on an in, <laughs> what is it, an inanimate object. Put it on the benches out there, at the bathroom stalls, right, where people are. You're going to start. And then one day, you know, it's not going to be hard to just give it to someone's hand. Yes. Right? And then talk about it and give it to him. Amen. Because... What you've done for the Lord Jesus Christ, who is Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, God Almighty, will last forever. Anything else will just burn up. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Jesus Christ, his purpose, he came to this world to save sinners. If you don't know where you're going after you die right now, and if you don't even remember the time you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, don't take chances. Realize that you are a sinner on your way to hell. Believe that Jesus is God who died for you. Believe that his blood can wash away all your sins. And with repenting heart, turning from your own ways and turning to the Lord, receive him, not in your head, but in your heart as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Don't take any chances. If you're not sure where you're going, but you want to trust Christ and him alone as your Lord and Savior, reject all the false teachings that you've ever trusted and learned, and... Know for sure that you go to heaven. In this prayer, prayer doesn't save. You know that. But if you do it from your heart, you'll get saved because God knows it. In this prayer, receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, once and for all, and get saved from hell. Dear God, I am a sinner. Please forgive all my sins. I believe Jesus is God. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for all my sins, shedding his precious blood. Right now, the best way I know how, with all my heart, I receive Jesus Christ into my heart as my personal Savior and Lord. I only trust precious blood of Jesus Christ to wash away all my sins. Thank you, Lord, for dying for all my sins, and I only trust you to go to heaven. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you pray with all of your heart, you know for sure that you could go to heaven once and for all. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, you know, sometimes with the things of the world, everything going on in our life, we neglect who you really are. You're God Almighty who came down to save wretched sinners like us dying on the cross. And we tend to just take it for granted many days. 
Help us to remember what you've done for us every single day and help us to go out there, obey your command, be the light of this world, and especially preach the gospel to lost sinners out there, Lord. I pray that you'll bless everyone here today, bless the rest of the services, and above all, even so come Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.